check our timing here, see. Anything specifically uh, you were thinking of mentioning aside from just the, you know, the museum that we crowdfunded and. No, I mean, I just thought that would be uh, an interesting piece to highlight considering yeah. it was uh, kind of the product of, of a fundraising campaign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, like totally your discretion. Uh, cool. You know, I don't even need to be really part of the conversation. I'll just kind of let you, uh, I'll introduce you and just kind of let you run and say you're going to give us a, a look at some of the, uh, a, a, the new look for a taste observatory. Yeah, so I guess what my plan is, I'm just going to sort of walk through the, the museum, talk a little bit about it, and then um, and then I'm going to go upstairs and talk about what we'd like to do in the future. Uh, so. Yeah, great. Yeah, and I think wrap it up with, uh, you know, how people can continue to, to uh, you know, make gifts or support the, the observatory. Sure, yeah. All right, I'm going to hand this Even off. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> It's not too late. So I guess how would they do that? Would they just go into? Uh, yeah, you know, the Giving New website's a little different. I'm not sure how granular they can get with their gift. Yeah. I think if they went. <laughs> Hold on, this like, that's like one of my first legitimate yawns. That's actually hard to believe. Um, I think if they go into arts and sciences, they might be able to. And maybe in others, say, like, Cornell. Yeah, and others, say, observatory or something like that. That would be my advice. Sure. Yeah, so just let me know when, when we're live and whatever. All right, uh, one minute. Okay. Maybe get a little closer to the... Uh, right here. <laughs> um... Almost there. You're almost there. It's almost You're there. standing right in front of it, though. Can you see it? Yes. And then they just want out. I don't know how. Like, I mean, I've already like had a fair amount to eat, but like, as soon as it's over, I'm just gonna like go down to Seneca Place and just start binging and just awful things. Are you gonna sleep on the couch down there? No, I'm gonna go home eventually, but I want to check in with people down there. Yeah. Just kind of staring at that cupcake. I haven't made my gift yet, actually. I need to. I should cue that up. Oh. All right, well, I'm gonna head out. All right, thanks for uh, all your help. No problem, sir. I'm gonna open this segment up. Oh, can I have that cupcake? Which one's this? Is this red velvet? That's the red velvet. Okay. Yeah. Um, open this segment up with one more. One more pitch. <laughs> for the dining. Oh, thank you. I hope you feel like you got your money's worth. I wholeheartedly believe you got our money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I got their money. You can see my reflection. We could make uh, like just like memes of me with the different food. You're like Cornell dining, <laughs> towering above the rest. Okay, here we are. All right. Uh hour and a half left of giving day uh, I just announced as we were leaving Henry Green that we uh, we have a new challenge in the works uh, uh, new challenge uh, if we hit 10,000 gifts tonight that's gonna unlock fifty thousand dollars for undergraduate scholarships uh, and we are currently at 9,100 gifts, so we need 900 gifts, and uh, I don't see any reason why all 900 can't go to Sam uh, Sam and his gang here at the Fuertes Observatory. Uh, he's going to give us a great tour of some new additions uh, to the a new museum space that, that he and uh, some uh, devoted students have, have uh, built. Uh, and really uh, kind of gave Fuertes Observatory, which is one of the more uh, iconic buildings on campus, gave it a nice, uh, did some nice renovations and really turned it into, uh, into a great space. And they're going to continue to work on it. 
and they could really use uh, your help in doing so. Uh, many of you did step up already and help them out with their crowdfunding project, uh, which Sam's going to show you kind of what was, what's the aftermath of, of that success. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Sam, uh, take us take us through. Sure. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sam Newman Stonebreaker, and I am this year's president of the Cornell Astronomical Society. So right now we're in the lobby of the 4 Case Observatory, which you can see in this poster. Uh, we would be outside, but it's dark, so we can't see anything. Anyway, so um, this area of 4 Case hasn't been changed that much uh, in the past year or so. It's, it's uh, been this way for a while, some paint jobs, but nothing of significance. But um, several of our alumni, uh, especially Mike Roman and many of his um, predecessors here at the Cornell Astronomical Society, really wanted to build a museum in the eastern wing of the observatory. So uh, it was used uh, for many years as almost a storage area. Um, and the walls just were peeling, had peeling paint, the lighting was awful. And um, yeah, so I we'll, guess we'll step in this way. So two years ago, this, this space and this room in here uh, were completely covered in peeling paint. The walls were a mess. Um, the floors were a disaster and there were basically no lighting to speak of. And the observatory has all of these really cool old uh, transit scopes and there's a theodolite over there and a zenith telescope. And all of these instruments that you've seen were used by civil engineers in the early part of the 1900s and late part of the 1800s to uh, determine time and location really accurately. Um, so many of these instruments were just kept here at the observatory for almost a century without being used or without even seeing um, the light of day or just kept in boxes down in the basement. So we wanted to, uh, let's just step back in here. I think the, the acoustics are very well. So we wanted to make this space really nice uh, to display many of these instruments. And with the generous support of alumni um, last year, we raised about $10,000 to just completely redo this space, um, repaint the walls, paint all the floors. Uh, we have nice museum spotlights now. Um, we're, we just ordered a, a great new display case that we're gonna put in here um, to display some of the smaller instruments, like we have a spectroscope, or spectro yeah, spectroscope, which, yeah, it's hiding away right now, but we'll put it back eventually. So, uh, so yeah, as I was saying, um, in the early 1900s, all of these instruments that you can see here were used um, by Cornell civil engineers, such as um, uh, Esteban Quartes, who the observatory is named after, and Irving Porter Church, um, many other really famous civil engineers to survey, uh, to determine time and location. And some of these instruments, especially that one over there, um, that was actually used, we believe, to determine Cornell's longitude. Uh, one of the first really accurate measurements of Cornell's longitude. So uh, you can see we've made these really beautiful plaques uh, that give uh, the information of all of the um, the instruments. Um, yeah, and come over here. We see this too. So it's pretty exciting stuff, and we're very grateful to all of the support we got to be able to do this work. Currently working on posters and uh, some displays to put on the wall. Uh, we had we had some uh, setbacks early on just due to dealing with how to proceed with painting and uh, replacing the light. So the, the physical part of this room was fixed. These two rooms were fixed uh, in the in the middle of the fall, the last semester. So um, we're still working on sort of the. We have a blank canvas, a nice, beautiful blank canvas uh, that we can fill with everything. Uh, with posters and displays about the history of the building. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's a great space. And, we have, and we've had thousands of people come in to the observatory since we've renovated uh, the space we've renovated. Everybody's really just amazed by all of these instruments. So um, yeah, so the display case that we, were, we just ordered it's going to go right here, and inside of it, we're going to put, as I was saying, the spectroscope, um, some old clocks. We have uh, 
chronometers um, that were very, it took for measured time very accurately. And we're going to put those in there and just sort of display some of the awesome civil engineering history and astronomy history uh, that we have here. Uh, something interesting that I should note, early on in the observatory's history, for the first 60 or so years, the roof actually uh, opened up with a clamshell roof. So all of these piers that you see right here uh, that the instruments are standing on, these were actually where the instruments stood um, when they were taking the measurements, uh, when they were taking the observations. So the roof opened up and you had these sturdy piers. The uh, civil engineers or astronomers took their measurements, uh, recorded the data, and closed the roof up, and these just stayed here. So kind of different from what you might think of a, a normal observatory with the dome, which we also have upstairs. So I guess we can go this way. And we also have these really cool uh, Mars panoramas, which um, have actually been here for a while, but now are nicely lit, backlit, um, with these display, uh, display lights. And these were taken actually using um, the Spirit and Opportunity rovers that Cornell Steve Squires, an astronomy professor here at Cornell, is the principal investigator, the scientific principal investigator of these missions. So Cornell has, it just, it changes the world. I mean, we're sending, we're sending probes off to Mars and looking at, looking at craters in a, in a world that a hundred years ago when Esteban Fuertes and Irving Porter Church were here, we, we were just looking at Mars through this tele, like, telescopes like this, and now it's pretty cool. And we can actually see them, uh, see Mars close up. So I guess we can walk this way. So this is all on the first floor of the observatory. So the observatory has this ground floor, and then we'll go up and check out the dome in a minute. Um, we give lectures, and we have our club meetings here every Friday. Um, we're eventually going to replace all of these posters in this room, um, and hopefully not a projector on the ceiling to be able to project You know, when we have lecturers come in. Uh, we have a projector that currently stands right here, and we project it on the screen up there. But, you know, it'd be nice to put it on the ceiling so we don't have to stumble over it. Uh, but yeah, we have, we've had lectures here for the past uh, several weeks. I think we've had six so far. Professor Mason Peck, Professor Phil Nicholson, uh, Professor Martha Haynes, and Don Lai, um, just to name a few. And we're going to have some more coming up. So we have a, a lot of outreach that goes on here. Um, so, okay, so another part of our crowdfunding campaign was to redo this beautiful old display piece that we have here. Uh, you can see all of these old images up on the top. These were actually original to um, to, to, the, to the building when it was built. And Cornell's first astronomy professor, Samuel Boothroy, uh, acquired these from uh, observatories out west, like Lowell Observatory, uh, Palomar. And he brought them back to Cornell, and there was a beautiful display case that we put them in. But many of them were sort of falling apart and faded and cracked. So as part of our crowdfunding campaign, we got all of these nice new colored uh, images um, from the Cassini orbiter around Saturn. Uh, most of these are actually coupled. And of course, the fan favorite is Pluto taken by New Horizons this past year. So we have all of the outer planets here. And we're hoping eventually to, to fill this bottom row here with more photos and maybe replace some of these. Yeah, um, but it's it's really exciting what we've been able to do so far. And um, I guess we'll head upstairs and take a look at the crown jewel of the observatory. Okay. So now I'm standing in the, the dome room of the observatory. Um, and as you can see here, there's a gigantic telescope in here. This is the Urban Porter Church Memorial Telescope. So um, Professor Fuertes died many years before the observatory was built, but he was such a big figure in civil engineering that they named this observatory after him. Um, so the observatory was built without a telescope, interestingly enough, uh, without a major telescope. Uh, our current finder scope, which you can see here, uh, off to the side was actually the original telescope used in this room. 
So pretty small, small telescope. Uh, but then in, in the late 19 teens, so 1919, Professor Irving Porter Church, also a civil engineering professor, bought some lenses um, from the European Observatory in Chicago and uh, sort of got the ball rolling with a, actually a crowdfunding project with Cornell alumni um, to the, the engineering department and raised, I don't remember the exact sum of money, but it was pretty substantial for the 1920s for early 1920s. And they were able to build this whole entire telescope along with the, the mount here. And uh, the mount was built by the Warner and Swayze Company in Cleveland, Ohio. And the uh, lenses were ground by an optician named John Bershear. And they're 12 inch lenses. So the lenses are 12 inches in diameter. So it's a pretty big refracting telescope, uh, which means the, the light's bent the light is bent to a focus instead of uh, reflecting. Um, but yeah, this this is our uh, this is our I don't know what you call it. It's just our crown jewel. Love it. Um, three to four thousand people a year look at Jupiter and the Moon for it. That's pretty cool. Um, one of the more interesting parts of it that we're pretty proud of is this in here. It's called the clock drive. Um, so the clock drive, uh, the clock drive basically allows the telescope to keep track with the motion of the Earth. Um, so as the as the Earth rotates on its axis, the stars and the planets and the sun move along. And if you didn't have some way of keeping track with that, you would be looking in the telescope and you'd see Jupiter just move right out of the field of view. So the clock drive is driven by weight, which you might be able to see down there. Um, it's kind of let me grab a light. Yeah, so you can see the weights down there. It weighs a couple hundred pounds, and they slowly fall. And as they fall, they turn some gears in here, which eventually turn all of these other gears. Um, which turns the telescope, which is the, the drive to the telescope, is right here. Um, so. Yeah, so we're really proud of that this is still in good shape. And we're, many universities actually got rid of their telescopes clock drives uh, in the late 19, 1900s. And they used uh, computers and stuff like that instead. Um, but recently, everybody that got rid of their clock drives is now kind of sad because they realized how special and uh, sort of historically uh, important they are. So there are very few telescopes that are open to the public every week um, that still have their clock drive and are still in great shape. So we're really, really thankful that Cornell still has all of this and lets us, uh, mostly undergrad undergraduates and graduate students, come here and use and use the observatory. So it's it's pretty great. Um, some of the things that we're we're hoping to do in the future. So a side note, uh, uh, Forte's turns 100 in the fall of uh, 2017. So it was, its construction was completed in 1917. So in a couple of years, it'll be the 100th anniversary. So uh, we have the downstairs uh, with the museum and the classroom are in pretty great shape. So uh, in the future, this kind of room, you can see the paint on the walls is sort of peeling. Uh, especially behind the camera over here. It's a little bit cluttered and we need some better organization uh, places to store our eyepieces and everything like that. And additionally, uh, one of our biggest drawbacks right now is that the dome, uh, which is almost 100 years old and hasn't had that many repairs or changes since it was constructed, uh, is deforming and it's leaking. So. Uh, Cornell and the facilities, uh, Cornell facilities are going to basically attempt to uh, fix all of the things that they can fix within the next couple of years to hopefully get that, you know, under control. But the dome leaks, so we, we have to use a tarp that we put over the telescope down here uh, to keep the water from basically damaging the amazing mechanics of the telescope and destroying the optics, um, which is kind of too bad. And we're hopefully, we're gonna hope that that gets resolved soon. Uh, another thing that we're going to try to do is replace the, the rug on the floor. Um, so once the, the dome gets fixed, and maybe even before that, uh, replace the rug with nicer flooring. Um, 
um, paint all the walls, paint the telescope. Uh, we'd love to see we'd love to see nice cabinets and organization ways to organize all of our eyepieces and other telescopes that we have uh, for observing outside on the deck. Um, so we can get rid of some of these boxes and this old cabinet that's been here for a while. But so this is our this is our major hurdle before the hundredth anniversary of Jorge. We want to see this room um, be spectacular and sort of worthy of the telescope that's that's here. Um, yeah, we also have outside. I'm just gonna be a little bit difficult to see. Um, it's dark. We have an observing deck, uh, and on Friday nights, we have all of our visitors. We have our visitors come out here, and they observe the planets and the stars uh, out on the deck. And it's pretty cool. We, we can have upwards of 200 to 300 people on a clear night. Um, as you can see right now, the moon's out, which is pretty cool. But this, uh, this was actually, I should mention, this was re uh, replaced within the past five to six years, I think. Um, so this is in pretty great shape. Uh, might have some structural impacts on the building, but that's that remains to be seen. So while the moon's out and the telescope's actually on it, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we are going to look through the telescope, hopefully not blind anybody. Uh, come on. All right, yeah, so you can see the moon in there. It's not cooperating as well as I hoped, but you see the moon. Anyway, so, yeah, this is our uh, this is our little. I don't know. We love this place, and uh, we've had many cast members, dozens of cast members over the years, uh, continue to support our 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 uh, crowdfunding project last year, and just our use of the observatory. Um, so it's been a lot of fun, and I've been here for three years, and I can't imagine another place to spend my Friday nights. So we're here. We're at the observatory every Friday night from 8 to midnight. Um, we, uh, yeah, so we host public observing if it's clear and we give tours of the telescope and the museum and our display case and we have lectures as well. So 8 to midnight on Fridays and uh, yeah, so you can find out more about us on our website, which is cornellastrosociety.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and if you want to help out with uh, some of our future projects and getting this room fixed and continuing to add displays and uh, some nice, some other things to the museum that we do need. Uh, you can help us on Giving Day. Uh, you can give on the Giving Day website in, we're through Arts and Sciences, and you can just put in Cornell Astronomical Society and Portuguese Observatory in the, uh, in the additional information section. And that would definitely help us uh, move forward with even some little things like uh, getting new case, new uh, display cases, or not display cases, but storage cases over here. And uh, yeah, some new, even some new lights down in the museum. We do need some more lights uh, to put up uh, to better illuminate things. But that's about all I have. So. Well, thanks so much, Sam. That was a great tour. And, uh, uh, you know, I think. The whole Cornell community really appreciates you and your group really kind of taking the observatory under your wing and making yeah. sure that this iconic place and it's full of uh, not only uh, astronomical history, but just Cornell history yeah. uh, is preserved. I think yeah, that's... Uh, oh, well, before you go, hopefully we'll be able to see this. Um, so we can see this. So this is a picture of the telescope that's up here. Um, this is Samuel Boothroyd. This is Cornell's first astronomer. Uh, this was taken in 1923. Um, so he's looking through the Irving Porter Church telescope. 
Um, so this is a pretty cool picture that we have. Uh, and you can see, as far as the telescope goes, not much has changed since. So it's a, it's almost a time capsule when you walk in here. Um, it just smells, it's just the smell of it and just everything else, just walking in and seeing the old display case, the old photos. It's just like walking back into the 1920s, which I think is pretty cool for everybody. Um, so we hope it stays around for another hundred years. Uh, yeah. Well, you're certainly uh, putting the right amount of time and effort into making sure that happens. So, uh, again, if you want to, uh, Sam just told you how you can uh, support their efforts uh, in uh, kind of renovating and preserving the Fuertes Observatory. Uh, you know, and, and like so many things on campus, it's 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 a it's a great academic reference, but it's also really uh, valuable for the local community to come and see those Friday night shows. It's a family friendly situation, so uh, there's a lot of value, a lot of value. You probably get three thousand uh, Cornell related people, Cornell students, and faculty and staff every year, and maybe a thousand just local uh, families and just people who just want to stop by and take a look at the stars and the moon. So it's it's a great resource for both Cornell and the greater Ithaca community. So it's it's a it's definitely a treasure for us. And uh, well, certainly, uh, should you feel so inclined, uh, jump in and support uh, Fuertes Observatory. Uh, in terms of our uh, update, all right, we're making a dent. Nine thousand three hundred and fifty-three gifts. Uh, about 647 more, and we're unlocking $50,000 for undergraduate scholarship. So let's keep pushing. Hour and five minutes left, $5.6 million raised. Um, a wonderful, wonderful day on all accounts. So thank you so much, Sam. We wish you the best of luck as you continue to uh, put some uh, uh, time and energy into, into Forte's Observatory. We always appreciate uh talking with you and, and seeing the latest work that you've done there. So keep at it and we'll, uh, we'll continue to support you. Thanks Keith. Have a good night. All right. You too. Thanks again. See you later.